isosceles trapezoids in mid-segments of trapezoids, and we have four theorems. We're at 6.6b. We're almost done with chapter 6. So there's 15 previous videos that you can find in the geometry playlist. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So this top and this bottom, and each of the parallel sides is called the base. So that would be base 1 and base 2. We could even call this base 1 and that base 2. And the non-parallel sides are called legs. Okay, those are the legs. And base angles of a trapezoid are two consecutive angles whose common side is a base. So for these two angles, their common side is this top base. For these two angles, their common side is this bottom base. If the legs of a trapezoid are congruent, if these two legs are congruent, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Just like an isosceles triangle has two congruent legs, doesn't it? So the properties of isosceles trapezoids, we've got our theorems here, and we're starting with the third theorem because in 6.6a we had the first two. So this is number three. It says if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles are congruent. So these two top ones are congruent to each other, and these two bottom ones are congruent to each other. Notice that the two top ones have one tick mark showing that they're congruent. These two bottom ones have two tick marks showing they're congruent to each other. I also could have done one arc for these two and two arcs for those for the geometric notation. So angle A is congruent to angle D down here, and angle B is congruent to angle C. We can write geometric notation as isosceles trapezoid, therefore base angle is congruent. Here's our fourth theorem. It says if a trapezoid has one pair of congruent base angles, then the trapezoid is isosceles. So, whoops, this should say A, B, C, D here, shouldn't it? So, A, B, C, D is isosceles, all right? And we can write geometric notation as trapezoid with pair of base angles congruent, therefore isosceles trapezoid. And our fifth theorem, I'm going to have one more after this farther down the board. Our fifth theorem is a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So we've got diagonal AC that's congruent to DB, and that makes it an isosceles trapezoid. And if it's an isosceles trapezoid, then DB is congruent to AC. So this is a biconditional statement, so it's true both forwards and backwards. We can say isosceles trapezoid, therefore diagonals congruent. Then we can say diagonals congruent, therefore isosceles trapezoid. See? It goes both ways. Using properties of isosceles trapezoids, take a look at the diagram first. That always helps. We've got W, X, Y, Z. We can see this is parallel to this. We can see this side is congruent to that side. We need to find the measure of angle Y. And it's given that W's angle is 117 degrees. Well, the measure of angle W plus the measure of angle X up here is equal to 180 degrees because of the same side interior angles theorem. So if this is 117 and we can add it to this one to get 180, we have our equation. We can subtract 117 from each side to eliminate it as a zero pair, and we get the measure of angle X is equal to 63. Well, angle Y is congruent to angle X. Isosceles trapezoid, therefore base angles congruent. That was from our theorem right there. So if they're congruent, and we're looking for the measure of angle Y, and it's congruent to X, and we know X is 63. Well, definition of congruent angles means they're equal, so we know the measure of angle Y is 63 degrees, just like X. Let's take a look at this one. Let's look at the diagram first. We've got QRST. We can see there's some diagonals. We can see point P there. We see that these two have the parallel marks, and we can see that's congruent to that. So QS, that's this diagonal, is congruent to RT. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, therefore the diagonals are congruent. That was our theorem that we did right here, okay? If they're congruent, they're equal. That's the definition of congruent segments. And 
we have given that RT is equal to 24.1 and QP is equal to 9.6 and they want us to find PS so that's from here to here see so if we've determined that segment QS is equal to segment RT that's 24.1 so we know QS is 24.1 so we know this whole thing is 24.1 and we're just looking for this little piece and it's telling us that QP is 9.6 so QP plus PS is equal to QS. That's the segment addition postulate. We know QP is 9.6. We know QS is 24.1. And we can subtract 9.6 from each side of the equation. And we get that PS is equal to 14.5. That's the remainder of the total of the entire diagonal. See? All right, here's applying conditions for isosceles trapezoids. Again, let's take a look at the diagram first. We have EFGH. We can see these two lines are parallel. They've got the markings. We can see angle E is 2Y squared minus 25. We can see H is Y squared plus 24. And it says find the value of Y so that EFGH is isosceles. So it says so that it is isosceles. So we're trying to prove it's isosceles. We're trying to make it isosceles, okay? So we can say, well, then let's make these congruent. Angle E is congruent to angle H because a trapezoid with a pair of base angles congruent is an isosceles trapezoid. That was that fourth theorem. And if they're congruent, they're equal. That's the definition of congruent angles. So we can add 25 to both sides of the equation and eliminate 25. That'll give us 2y squared equals y squared plus 49. We can subtract y squared from each side to eliminate it here, and we get 1y squared is equal to 49. Now all we have to do is find the square root of both sides. The square of y squared is just a y, and the square of 49 is a 7, or it could be a negative 7, because if we multiply two positives, it's a positive, and if we multiply two negatives, it's a positive. So it might be 7 or negative 7, okay? Take a look at this diagram. We have JKLM. We can see the diagonals. We can also see the markings that these two are parallel. And it says JL, this diagonal, is equal to 5Z plus 3. And KM, this diagonal, is equal to 9Z minus 12. We need to find the value of Z so that JKLM is isosceles. So again, we're going to set segment JL congruent to segment KM. Okay? the two diagonals, because diagonals that are congruent, therefore it's an isosceles trapezoid. That was from the fifth theorem. And if they're congruent, they're equal. That's the definition of congruent segments. So we're going to set this expression equal to that expression, and we can subtract 5z from both sides. That eliminates it, and we have 3 equals 4z minus 12. We can add 12 to both sides to get rid of that negative 12, and that gives us 15 equals 4z. We divide both sides by the coefficient 4 and get 3.75 equals z. So we found the value of z so that JKLM is isosceles, okay? So that the diagonals are congruent. And the mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segments whose endpoints are the midpoints of the legs. And the trapezoid mid-segment theorem is similar to the triangle mid-segment theorem. We did that back in 5.4a. We found the mid-segment of a triangle, and we're going to talk about that more in one second. So here's the trapezoid mid-segment theorem, and look at its unfortunate theorem number. We're in Chapter 6, Lesson 6, and this is the sixth theorem. So it says the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base. So this mid-segment, XY, is parallel to BC and AD and its length is one-half the sum of the lengths of the bases. So if we knew the length of BC and added it to the length of AD and divided it in half or multiplied it by a half, that would be the length of XY. XY is equal to half BC plus AD, all right? So here's finding lengths using mid-segments. Take a look at the diagram first. We can see RSTU, we can see mid-segment MN, and we can see it's 31, whatever the units are, and RU is 38. We need to find ST up here. Well, we know MN, the mid-segment, is equal to half ST plus RU because of that trapezoid mid-segment theorem. 
That means 31 is equal to half of st plus 38. We can distribute the half, so we get half st plus 19. Now we have 31 equals half st plus 19. We can multiply both sides by 2 to eliminate this fraction half, and we'll get 62 is equal to 1 st plus 38. We can subtract 38 from both sides and find out that 24 is equal to st. All right? And also, the mid-segment of a trapezoid can be called a median. It's, it's median, okay? So here's that triangle mid-segment theorem that we learned about in 5.4a. So this is just a review and a reminder. Plus, I want to show you something kind of new about it. So this triangle mid-segment theorem says a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the side of the triangle. So it's like this base here. And its length is one-half the length of that side. So DE is half the length of AC. The only difference between the triangle mid-segment formula and the trapezoid mid-segment formula is the addition of a second base length. So if you look at these, this is saying half this base plus another base. This is just saying half of a base. So what we can do is say, well, the trapezoid formula is saying half base one plus base two. Triangle formula is just saying half base. We can add a zero to the triangle mid-segment formula, so it's like the trapezoid mid-segment formula. That would just be adding another base, see? All right? So use different colored pencils to keep track of angles and side values and lengths, because you see, I use color, and it really does help your eyes see what's going on. So if that's going to help you, and you need to find an angle measure or a variable, use a different color, OK? for your notes and stuff. You can do your regular work with a regular pencil so that, unless your teacher doesn't mind the color. Our next lesson is we're going to construct a kite with a compass, then we're going to move on to chapter seven. When the first lesson there is ratios in similar polygons, okay? So get your straight edge and your compass ready for the next lesson, and we'll do another construction video, okay? Hope you're having a great day. Keep going. I'll see you next time. Bye.